Welcome back to Switched to Linux. So today we are going to have a look at Scribus as a means of making PDFs. So I started looking into making uh, how I was going to make good PDFs for the cooking channel. And uh, at first I was just using my recipe output system, which I'm using Gourmet and uh, outputting the recipe but then I want to put branding on the top and so I came up with an idea to basically create an overlay to put on top of them in GIMP but the problem is the recipe portion ended up saving as a solid image and I was not able to actually select the text or or anything else and since I want the recipes to come out as a Creative Commons making it easier to copy them and whatever else you want to do. I want to make a PDF that not only looked better because it did look a little pixelated, but also functioned better. So I started looking around and what I found is Scribus, which is a, a very uh, fabulous, um, a very fabulous system to create, um, to create your PDFs. So we're going to go ahead and show you what Scribus looks like. So I just installed it um, just from, right from the repository and it installs, I gotta remember what it installs under, uh, installs under graphics, there we go. You can of course move it around where you, uh, where you like, but um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, boot this guy up and have a look at it. So I'm using 1.4.6. Uh, this is a very nice desktop polishing. It does have a few more complicated elements, so I want to show you some of these. Uh, when we first load it up, we can create you know, our, our document layouts. We can also create something from templates. So you know, there's brochure templates in here that you can use. So what I end up doing is I created my own template. So here is the home template for my home cooking hacks. I'm going to walk you through what I have in this template. Um, so I just have a black banner with the text up here at the top, and I put the text in with the fonts and the colors that I wanted to use. And then down here, I have my logo, and I have just my uh, my final um, uh, statement here. This is Creative Commons. And then you'll see this blank title box here in the middle. This is actually a text box. So the idea is I have the recipe and I export that recipe. And then what you can do is right click and get text or I can edit the text. So inside the text editor, what you'll see is that each line uh, will correspond to certain text. So I can put a title here and I can put a subsection and uh, paragraphs, whatever else. And then the what the cool thing is about this is I can create a series of styles incorporating colors. So I can I can basically export my recipe as text, paste it into here. Then I just need to come over here and select which each of these guys are. So I selected the first line. So each line I can uh, subset. So you can see a section title here. And then this is just my, my default paragraph style defaults to everything. So when I go ahead and hit the save button up here, you'll see that it gives me the title is a nice coloration. The subsection is also the same font I'm using with has a, cord, uh, a combination of both colors. And then I have all of my paragraph text and just the fonts that I wanted to use. Now you can also do things, uh, and I'm not an expert at this by all means. This is a program that I'm still learning. Um, but one of the things that you can do is you can create a link in here. And let me see if I can see right away how to actually do that. Um, this is one of those things I did not look into prior to uh, doing the video. It just occurs to me somebody told me that, yeah, you can throw a link in there somewhere. So I have no idea. Um, we'll go ahead and do that uh, another time. Uh, but what I wanted to show you here is how you can create your template. So... Uh, that's kind of what this video is about. It's it's how you can create your template. So I'm going to close this, close without saving. And then what we'll do is we'll just create a new single page document. Okay. So what we're going to do is with my new single page document, um, I used up here, I used a series of colors. So up here is the shape button. And then you can pull this down to put in a series of different shapes that are available for us. So maybe we'll go ahead and do a, a, a tux there. So there we go. We got a tux put in here. And then um, you can put in some, some colorations. Uh, you can also grab, let's see here. Just 
trying to go back to my, uh, there we go, there's my shapes. So you can do a series of things you'll see here. Need to move that over. So um, right click this, um, and then we can send it up or down. We can raise it, we can lower it. So we'll go ahead and lower that. I want this over, over top. And then you can actually set your colorations. Now to set your colorations um, under your attributes, so let's see. Sorry, it's not attributes. This is something I did it the first couple times and I was like, oh yeah, that was pretty easy to do. And then it's like, okay, so down here is your colors. So what you can do is you have default colors. Um, you have a set, set of other colors you can pick from, but then you can actually set and predefine your colors. So you'll see I have black, blue, cool black, but I can also define my own colors. So defining your colors is done under your uh, edit menu. And then we have colors. So this here, you'll see these are my defaults. Now for what I'm doing with home cooking hacks, I wanted to set some very specific colors. So if I do something new, I have all my same colors. So I can hit the new button and then you pick your color model. So if you're doing print, which you'd probably use this more for a print option is a CMYK. If I'm doing web type, web type stuff, I usually do RGB. The difference is CMYK is more of a reflective type. So uh, it, it basically means as you print out something in CMYK, you're relying on the light to reflect the color back. But in web design stuff and computer stuff, graphic animations, things that people look at on a screen, you use RGB because it is light emitting source. You can convert between the colors, but if you do find yourself in the printing field and you do something in RGB, you'll kind of look like an amateur. <laughs> but if you do something on a web, face or anything involving a screen and you're in CMYK, you'll also look like an amateur. So you got to know how your, uh, how your things work. So since I was using things primarily for the website type stuff, I picked RGP and then um, you can come over here and you can put in your percentages. What you can't do that I couldn't able, couldn't find is the hexadecimal, which is what I would usually work in but you can move your color wheels around to identify the specific colors you want. So that's kind of an ugly green. So let's call it um, ugly. So push OK. And now you'll see in my color options, now I have ugly as a color option. So if I want to come over here and make this banner ugly because, you know, it was something that was uh, part of the um, part of the uh, colors, just hit the your attributes here. Um, I'm sorry, I keep on doing the attributes for some reason. It's the properties panel, which we already have open. So now you can come down here and you should find your ugly down here. So now we have our ugly colors. So here's your tux. Um, so you can make your tux, your black, you can make it various different colors. So let's go ahead and, and do, uh, do that. Let's well, actually, let's make him black. And then I'm looking at, you can make the transparency adjustment over here as well. So that'll uh, kind of dictate more of your colors. Okay, so there is kind of how you, um, uh, how you can manage your colors. Um, you can set in your lines. Now in here, in, in addition to your, your colors, um, you can also do your styles. So this is where you can set your paragraph styles. You'll see I have my default paragraph styles. If you want to create a new one, um, I want to create a new paragraph style, give it my name. Maybe I might give it a title here. Um, and then with my title, what I can do is I can come over here and I can choose my specific font. I can choose my specific style. Of course, this font only has one style and then I can go up in my size. I can adjust my colors here. Once again, I can pick my ugly or I can go with some other colors here. Now, if you want to use, you'll see that there's two lines. The top line is the color of your text. The bottom line is if you do something like you can do your uh, shadow text, you can do an outline, you can do a strikeout. And these various items will, uh, will be controlled by uh, by your, your subtext. So we'll do yellow with a green. And this one here is going to be an outline. So we'll go ahead and bump this up in size a little bit, push apply. 
And so now if I go in and I create a text, so we'll come up here, create your text. I'll say ugly title as my text. And then going to do now is going to, oh, so you can tell I'm still, still learning this guy here. This is a good thing about Linux is there's a lot of programs and applications that you can use to learn. I was looking for the, um, it changed my, my uh, menu order change. Let's just go ahead and hit my edit menu. My edit text. That's what I was looking for. There, there was a button on my template that I had must have put in it over there. Couldn't find it. So over here now I can come down here and collect my default uh, paragraph style or I can pick my title. So if I pick my title, you'll see that it's now ugly text. Um, and then maybe I want to change my style around. If I just want to change one instance of the text, I can change that instance of the text with the, with the edit text option. Still looking for where that edit text was. I'm a noob at this program. It's all good. So I can come over here and I could do some various different colorations. One of the things that I found is that changing font styles, individual things is kind of a pain over here. But if I want to, for example, center the text, I'd actually want to come over and re-edit the style. So I can come over here and I can uh, do things um, so let's look for my uh, centering. So here I can center it. So applying that, you'll see that it will apply. Um, I can do some paragraph indenting, um, which would be applicable if I had some basic paragraphs. So now what I did on my template is I wanted to have another, uh, another paragraph title here, but I didn't want to actually put any text in it. So what I did is I just came over here and input that and then I can adjust the size the way size that I want it. So then if this is now ready to go, we have our title set up, we have our blank text, I can right click and I can get the text edit edit text is the other one I was looking for. So you can do that and you can drop your things in, but maybe I want an image down here at the bottom. So if you want an image, there's a spot for an image. We have the uh, option here and then you can just drag and drop where your size is. And then you'll see it'll have the X in it when it does not ha yet have the image. So right click, hit the get image, and now we can hunt around for an image. Um, I'm going to go to my um, Linux stuff if I can find some. Go ahead and do this one. We'll push input. Now, um, the reason it did not, you don't see it is because this is a mostly transparent image. So a couple of the options you have, you can adjust the frame to the image or you can adjust the image to the frame. So if you adjust the frame to the image, it's going to create this giant massive block there, which is actually the size of this image. So that's not the option we want. So if you right click though, you can adjust the image to the frame um, then what it's going to do here is it's going to give us the appropriate size for the frame that we have. So I might want to just go ahead and make this guy a little bit bigger just so I can put the, put my Linux banner at the bottom down here. So there's that. And then what I might want to do is um, I might want to, go ahead and lower this to the bottom so that the text that I select is always above it. So you can select the items there just by going around it. So now we have our switch to Linux image down there. We have our ugly uh, text title. Um, I might even want to uh, just say enter title here. Of course, this font is so bad that maybe what I want to do is adjust the um, adjust the font a little bit. So Again, you'd want to make these adjustments by coming over here and replacing the styles. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the font to something else. Just have a look at the various options we have here. 
Wish I had my uh, flaming ones on here. I have some that are like on fire. There you go. We'll just stick with that for now. Okay, so now this would allow us to create a basic template. I just need to come over here, edit the title, whatever I want, right click down here, input the text. You can actually input the text from a basic text file. And then you can come in, edit the text styles. Now to save this as a template, so suppose this is ready to go. And what I might do is just uh, save this as, as this system here because my enter title here, this will just give the person the idea, just come up here and highlight this and change the title. And then down here, I might even, if I was distributing this, I might even go ahead and write, um, right click here to get text or highlight and edit text. So I might just do that. That tells a person that we can come over here, hit the get text, which would replace what we have or just append the text. So now if we want to save this, I can save this as a template. And then if I save this as a template, you'll see it will automatically select this and I can write ugly template. And then you pick the category where you want this to be. So maybe uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this into my own. You'll see there's own templates or there's other PDF templates. Then you can pick your size. Uh, this is an ugly template. Helps to spell, right? Okay. And then now if I close this out, and I hit new. Of course, I want to hit new from template. Go down to own templates. You'll see that we have our ugly template. So now it's ready to go. So that's how you can create your style page any way that you want with Scribus. Uh, save yourself a template. Now all your templates are going to appear in your, uh, in your home folder. I think it's one layer in. I believe it is dot scribus and then templates. And then here you'll see that uh, you have your ugly template right over here. So if I want to delete that, I can delete the files from here. But the other thing I can do is up here, hit new from template. I can go into my own and I can right click and remove. So this will enable you to manage all of your templates. Of course, they're down in your uh, down there in your folder. So you can um, uh, you can go ahead and um, make sure you make a backup of that folder if, if you happen to need to uh, transfer this to something else. As far as saving, you can uh, export as EPS, PDF and image SVG. And the save files is its own proprietary format, I believe. Uh, where's my save button? And we're just going to go ahead and drop this right on the desktop. So you'll see it saves as an SLA by default. Okay, but what we're going to do is we are going to export it as a PDF. And then here you can select your various options fonts, extras, hit save, and then that hopefully will have, oh, I think I still have that saving in my old default directory. Okay, so it's saved in, um, looks like that's saved in my home folder. Actually above my home folder. Yep, right there. So here's my PDF that I get. Um, now this of course is an image, but you'll notice that all of these text blocks are highlightable text. So uh, let me show you what I, what I did with this and the reason I, I uh, chose to use Scribus for this. Um, if I go ahead and hit my open and need to go to my documents, home cooking hacks, 
Okay, so here is what I'm doing. So I have my basic template that has my header, my footer, and then now I can import my image. So I have my image here. I have my titles are all centering. I'm uh, importing in with my subsections, cleaning up my, I'm just cleaning up the text, moving things around a little bit. And then as I export the files, Some of these are my older ones. I can't remember which ones are my older ones. Okay, so this is my newer one here. So now as you export the files, all of the text on this is highlightable text. So you can copy this if you want to copy this and paste it somewhere. Probably won't copy and paste too, too well, but at least it gives you a way that you can copy and paste the recipe as, as it's released. So then these guys here are being input. So the next thing I need to do is I need to change this to be a link. And the other thing I want to figure out how to do is I want to see if I can maybe make the um, make the image linkable to view a video or some other video, embed a video in here. Um, just some things I'm thinking about. So there's just a, a very, very basic primer on using Scribus. This is uh, there's a lot of stuff in here. So, you know, you can do a whole lot of different um, a whole lot of different things. This is by all you know no means a comprehensive thing. Just to let you know that this is a great application to use if you need to create good professional PDFs. Of course, another choice potentially could have been um, LibreOffice uh, has the uh, uh, I forget which uh, which program it is inside of LibreOffice. I think it might be the Draw. But there was something about that I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't e as easily work with that as far as creating our uh, as far as creating our system, so that's kind of why I went with uh, went with uh, Scribus here. But I've been really enjoying this. I'm enjoying learning uh, how it works, uh, seeing how it works, and uh, maybe when I figure out all the other stuff, I'll come back and do a little bit more uh, more advanced stuff with it down the road. So uh, with all that being said, uh, thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this uh, this video here. And uh, if you do uh, like what you see on the channel, you can help support me at Patreon, which I would put it up on my screen right now, except my uh, OBS thing has messed up my uh, da -da -da -da, camera view. There we go. That's better. <laughs> Sometimes I, my uh, OBS gets a little bit messed up because of how many different cameras come and go out of here. So if you do want to help support the channel, you can find me on patreon.com forward slash Tom M. And there are also Amazon links below. So thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.